Hi, and welcome to Learn Kubernetes with Google. My name is Laura, and I'm a software engineer at Google, working on managed multi-cluster in GKE. In this video, we're going to talk about multi-cluster. Yes, not just one cluster, not even necessarily just two clusters, but as many Kubernetes clusters as you want, all working together. This is a pretty fast developing space where users and Kubernetes contributors have been coming together to find a way to, as they say, break the cluster boundary. I'm excited to walk you through some of the challenges and pain points that bring people to want multi-cluster deployments and what is out there now to help them. So let's start with what is multi-cluster. Well, actually let's start with one Kubernetes cluster. As you know, it can be composed of many nodes, all scheduling different workloads and network together. As an application developer, you don't need to know what node your workload is actually on. Kubernetes takes care of the scheduling and also the networking and possibly any persistent storage if you have stateful workloads. So it feels more like this, like they're all just working together out of the box. So at its most basic, multi-cluster is about doing that too, but for multiple clusters. Workloads over here in this purple cluster could talk to workloads over there in the green cluster. You could replicate your application entirely on each cluster. You could split it up into pieces and run it across all the clusters at once. But why would we bother to connect multiple different clusters instead of making a huge mega Kubernetes cluster with tons of nodes on it? So categorically, the common reasonings can be bucketed into wanting to control your node's location, isolation, or reliability in more complex ways than allowed by a single cluster deployment of Kubernetes. Users may want to spread their application out over multiple locations to reduce latency or restrict certain types of data to certain geographical jurisdictions. They might want to isolate workloads more easily for performance, security, organizational reasons, but still allow some cross-communication to occur. And regarding reliability, having an application on multiple clusters reduces the potential blast radius of an infrastructure or app problem on any one cluster and also provides for more scaling options beyond the limits of a single cluster. So to get all this nice stuff and to make this work, there are a couple aspects of the Kubernetes single cluster experience that need to be addressed for this multi-cluster case. So we need to know how to deploy workloads to multiple clusters, how to get the workloads to communicate with each other between multiple clusters, how to replicate or make accessible storage across multiple clusters for stateful workloads, and how to sync or otherwise control cluster configuration policies like namespaces and RBAC across all the clusters. So in this video series, I'm going to talk to you about this bullet, networking. Networking clusters together is a problem space that has a pretty developed standard in the multi-cluster world. And the standard itself is called multi-cluster services or MCS API. But I'll come back to that in a little bit, because first I want to explain this networking bullet a little bit deeper. So when you have workloads split onto different clusters, normal Kubernetes today doesn't automatically know how to network between them. It's like the workload on one of these clusters is impossibly far over the ocean from the workload in another cluster to even talk to each other. Another way to think about it is that you are in a dark forest full of trees and your workloads are spread out around and you have no compass or any navigational tool to, talk, to find them. So one option is to add your own compass, so to speak, by routing your traffic through something else. Here, Nginx is acting as a load balancer. You might configure your Nginx instance to route traffic matching a certain request pattern to all the matching backends, which you might have sprinkled around across all your various clusters. The downside is there's no general standard for how you might set this up, so you kind of have to figure it out and configure it by yourself. To solve this in a first-class way, we want the Kubernetes clusters to route those multi-cluster service requests to each other themselves. And we'd like to do this without any other third-party or custom solution. So this is where the MCS API comes in. It's a standard championed by the upstream Kubernetes special interest group SIG multi-cluster, as a Kubernetes native way to network multiple clusters together. Now, it's not the only way to network multiple clusters together, but it is a fast, easy way if you want to use the Kubernetes primitives you're already familiar with, like services and endpoints or endpoint slices. And it's a great option if you want something that's somewhere between a single cluster application and a fully fledged service mesh. 
So a real quick version of how the MCS API works is to bridge the gap between service definitions on the producing cluster side and endpoints or endpoint slices on the consuming cluster side using new custom resources called service exports and service imports. But I'll go to, into that in more detail in the next video. The important part here is that emphasizing the Kubernetes primitives is a main motivating factor for SIG multi-cluster, who is producing the standard. This way, Kubernetes distributions can use this general purpose API. You could describe how clusters could share services with it, and users like you can deploy them very similarly to how you already deploy your in-cluster services today. In SIG multi-cluster, everybody's working together to make a standard that works at this level and feels natural to everyone using Kubernetes already. That's it for this one. Thank you for joining Learn Kubernetes with Google. Check out the next episode, Multi-Cluster Services API, Key Concepts.